Uh, now, sometimes when a uh, conversation about these abortions come up, the argument that they are sometimes medically necessary for the health of the mother uh, is used as a justification. Could you dive into a bit of that from your experience as, as an OBGYN? Uh, does that argument hold up? And, and how do we uh, really care for both the mother and the baby in those medically challenging situations? Yeah, that, that's a very, very good question. And I think um, there's just a lot of people that don't understand this. Um, Obviously, we all want to take care of a woman whose health uh, may be in danger from a pregnancy, but the reality is that is very, very uncommon. Um, we, we have a, a whole branch of medicine that's called perinatology, and that is high-risk OB specialist. So if a woman is pregnant and she has cancer or she has hypertension or she has some other um, medical problem that might cause her to be in danger with the pregnancy, if she wants the pregnancy, they do a great job of helping her make it through the pregnancy. Um, doing a late-term abortion for the life and health of the mother, um, statistics tell us that happens probably only about 1% of the time. So mm -hmm. most people who say, well, I think that we should allow it because we, we don't know what the situations are and we, um, uh, we want to care for women, don't understand that the vast majority of late-term abortions are done for exactly the same reason that women have early abortions, and that is 97% um, are for um, financial reasons or social reasons, um, which is a, a very sad commentary to say that that, that allows the killing of a, of a human being. Um, in fact, abortions after the first trimester, um, Currently, we have uh, a little less than a million abortions a year in this country. 10% of those occur after the first trimester, so potentially pain-capable babies. So that's about 100,000 abortions a year. 1.3% um, of those occur um, after 20 weeks, after around the time of potential viability. So we're talking about 13,000 viable babies a year that we um, allow to be terminated. and. Um, Again, most of the time that's for social and uh, financial reasons. In fact, when, when women have been um, polled as to why they have abortions that late, the two reasons that come up very frequently are indecision. They had trouble deciding whether they wanted to terminate and uh, trouble deciding about the abortion with the man involved. Mm -hmm. So regarding indecision, if she's undecided, she may change her mind again after the termination. And I think emotionally, there's there's a lot of good data that that's very, very hard on a woman. Mm -hmm. um, uh, trouble deciding about the abortion. If she wanted the abortion, she would have been able to have a first trimester. So to me, that tells me that most of those are situations where the man does not want the, the child and he has coerced that woman into having the termination. So as a society, I think it would be wonderful if we could make a decision to say, that's not okay. When, when you look at polling, uh, Gallup and Pew polling, um, you discover that 64% um, of Americans do not think we should have readily accessible abortion on demand after the first trimester. And 80% feel like we should not have it on demand in the third trimester. Um, a lot of people think that there are laws, but to tell you the truth, there are some states that have chosen not to legislate this procedure. And there are a handful of abortion clinics in this country that will abort viable babies just because the mother requested. it. Um, we should back up for a minute and talk about safety. Um, an early abortion, a lot of, um, uh, You'll, you'll hear a lot of news reports about how abortion is so safe and abortion uh, supposedly is safer than childbirth. That data is bad because we really don't keep a good record of, of complications related to abortion. Um, currently, most states allow abortionists to voluntarily report their complications. I think we all realize that's probably not gonna happen. So there's not a lot of um, uh, encouragement or enforcement of a reporting abortion complication. So I think a lot of them just go unnoticed. Um, mm -hmm. As a pregnant uterus um, enlarges, um, there's a lot more potential for damage. The uterus mm -hmm. gets softer. So when that abortionist is reaching in with his instruments to pull out the baby progressively, there's the potential that he could um, um, 
perforate the uterus, cause damage to bowel, cause bleeding. Um, <clears throat> when studies have looked at abortion mortality, um, compared to um, eight weeks of pregnancy, the studies tell us that each week beyond that, the woman's risk of dying increases by 38%. Um, wow. In the second trimester, um, from 13 to 15 weeks, her risk of dying is um, uh, 15 times what it is at eight weeks. Um, from about 14 to uh, 19 weeks, her risk of dying is 30 times. And 20 weeks and beyond, these viable abortions that we're hearing about, these 13,000 abortions that we have in our country every year, the risk of dying is 76 times what it is um, in an early first trimester abortion. So uh, these are very dangerous for women. Mm -hmm. um, they're dangerous. They're not necessary hardly at all to save a woman's life. Um, in regards to um, performing an abortion to save a woman's life, an abortion by definition wants to kill the fetus. Mm -hmm. If a woman has, for example, early premature rupture of membranes and she has an infection or she has a uh, malignant hypertension that poses a threat to her life, her obstetrician can deliver that baby. So she does not need to go down the street to an abortionist and sit in a clinic with other women who want to abort their healthy babies in order to be cared for. Her doctor can deliver her, but what the doctor does is he separates the baby from the woman to save the woman. But the baby, if the baby is potentially viable and at 22 weeks, halfway through a pregnancy, a baby is potentially viable, then the NICU team can come down and they can evaluate and they can see if that baby can be saved. Even if the baby can't be saved, um, we're seeing a lot of hospitals that have uh, perinatal hospice programs in place. That means that they're gonna provide comfort care for that baby, they're gonna provide pain control. If it is gonna pass away, they're gonna let that family hold the baby, be with the baby, say their goodbyes to the baby. That's a much more humane way of doing it. If the woman has to be delivered, than to send her down the street to an abortionist who is probably going to have to spend one to three days to ripen her cervix in order to dilate it to get in to do his DNA. So if a woman really needs to be delivered, she's much better off being cared for by her own doctor in a hospital than by an abortionist in a clinic. So from what you're saying, no matter what the abortion law is, women will be able to be cared for in those situations. And and by going to an OBGYN uh, or, or similar doctor, they will be given better care and they both they and their family will be more cared for. And um, as you bring up the laws in the United States, it's important to remember that the United States is one of the most extreme when it comes to countries in the world uh, with laws towards abortion. They're one of only seven countries in the world uh, that allows abortion uh, past 20 weeks. And that list includes North Korea and China. And so this is not, um, the, the, most of the countries in the world have, have realized that this is not humane and this is not necessary uh, to care for, to care for women.